What's going on guys? It's Coach Steven with 15 points of tennis. And there's a saying in sports that is to take what the defense gives you. And it's true in tennis as in any other sport. See, the thing is like watching tennis players over the years, many players think their shots are so wonderful that they can work in all conditions against any opponent in, in any scenario. But that is simply wishful thinking. That's going to get you in a lot of trouble. Take basketball, for instance. You can be the greatest three-point shooter of all time, but if someone's right in front of your face, standing right here with their arm up, you can, probably can't even get your shot off, let alone shoot a good percentage. Or let's say if someone in basketball is seven foot standing right in front of the rim, it's going to be pretty hard to jump over them to dunk the ball. So in a nutshell, in th that scenario, if someone plays you close, you want to drive by them. If someone plays off of you, you want to shoot over them, right? So those are your two options. And there's always this trade-off. And it seems obvious. But in tennis, unlike a team sport like basketball, there's no teammate to cover up your weakness, all right? So if you don't have multiple options, not even a great defender, but a mediocre defender who can adjust to you is going to shut you down and make your life difficult. I mean, so don't fool yourself if you go out there and you know, you're know you just ripping the ball from the first few shots and your opponent isn't ready. And yeah, you might win the first few games, but then your opponent starts to lock in. They start to see the speed. They know where you're hitting. And a, and a decent defender is gonna adjust and really make you do a lot of different things to win. So if you can adjust, again, you're gonna be in trouble. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Oh my gosh. So your trade-offs in tennis, unlike basketball, which is drive and shoot, is to attack with time or to attack with disguise. Now attacking with time is pretty simple. I'm trying to get the ball there before my opponent gets there. I'm trying to beat my opponent to the spot. So I can either move forward with my feet to take that time away from my opponent, I also take time away from myself, or I could just, you know, maybe just hit, hit the ball harder, again, trying to get the ball there. Disguise is a little bit different. Instead of trying to maximize every split second, okay, I'm actually going to, you know, take my time, even let my opponent recover a little bit, but I'm going to hold my shot and freeze, keep, be very still right here, and my, the advantage I get from holding still is that I leave all my options open so I can go behind my opponent. If they over recover, I can go to the open court or maybe I can drop shot if they drop too far back. And by holding my shot, they don't know what I'm doing so it slows my opponent's reaction time. And you, again, I can attack in a very different way. So attacking with time is easier in the sense that you're able to select your target in your mind right off the bat and early. And so you can start your preparation, you can line up your body to your spot, and so it makes executing the shot a heck of a lot easier. Where attacking with time may be difficult is you need to anticipate that move, oftentimes moving forward right off your opponent's shot. Because if, let's say, you're trying to take time away from your opponent and, oh, you're late in terms of moving forward, well, now you can't attack with time because there's a good chance they've already recovered. So you, your anticipation and readiness needs to be very good attacking with time. When it comes to attacking with disguise, it's a little easier in the sense that you don't need to rush yourself. You can wait for the ball. You can really set up, right? And with that extra time, you can actually read your opponent and where he, he or she is, and you have more time to do that. The downside is the hard part with holding your shot is you need to be spaced so perfectly where off the same setup, you can hit left, you can hit right, and you have to have really good vision to, to watch for where your opponent's moving.
So imagine you're the offensive player, right? If the ball lands anywhere short in the court, right, now I'm able to cut the ball and take time away from my opponent with my feet, okay? And so generally, if again, the ball lands short, I want to squeeze my opponent for time. I don't, if I wait back here and the ball lands short, again, now the ball's in the air too long. The, 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 air, the air resistance is slowing the ball down. My opponent probably recovered already. Plus, it might be dropping or low. If I'm not able to catch the ball at the peak, it's harder to manipulate. But if it's dropping, then I, I won't be able to play offense. I've lost that ability to hurt my opponent with time. Now, if your opponent hits the ball anywhere deep along the baseline, okay, I can be the fastest guy in the world. I can't attack with my feet anymore. My feet are my quick feet are useless. All these you know little steps, they're they look beautiful, but my feet are useless. I'm stuck if the ball lands deep. I really need to be able to hold and use my strength, okay, use use my vision, freeze my opponent, and, and then go to the corner. All right, and use that extra, extra time the, for the ball to land deep all right, to set up and read. If my opponent hits the ball hard generally, okay, yes, it, it, it might be tough to attack if your opponent hits a really great shot, but if your opponent hits the ball hard and they're off the court, well, they've taken time away from themselves to recover, okay? So instead of me fiddling around trying to hold my shot and guess where my opponent's going, no, I want to choose my target early. If my opponent's off the court, I just want to deflect and rip it to the other side. Very differently, if my opponent hits soft, I assume, again, they're back in the court, if my opponent plays to play these soft defense with these slices or, or lobs or put more air on the ball. Again, I can't, I can't just choose my spot anymore, okay? Because if I choose my spot early, my opponent's going to know and, and going to play defense. I have to start holding my shot to keep them guessing and slow the re reaction down. So in summary guys, the ball comes hard and short. You want to just choose your target attack with time. If the ball comes soft and deep where you're here, 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 you're spacing, you want to get that spacing perfect, okay, and attack with disguise. If the ball comes soft and short, all right, you get a sitter short. That one's a little tricky because you can choose, obviously having gotten to the ball early, you can you choose to attack with disguise because you can hold your shot once you get there early, or you can just hit the ball hard and finish off the point with the short ball winner. But there's a little bit of a nuance here. If you feel like you can just end the point with a clean winner, I'd say maybe you want to prefer just attacking with time. But if you're just hitting a setup short ball where you don't really think you can finish the point, I think you should attack with more disguise. And the reason why is when you hold your shot, you mess up your opponent's rhythm. Your opponent isn't able to hit as clean because they don't know when to split step, right? Against a really good player, if you just come up here and just rip the ball and attack with time, if, they, if they're in rhythm with you and they read where you're hitting, well, now you, you can really get counter-punched hard, okay, for just trying to attack with time if you're not able to finish the point. So you want to be careful at a higher level. Here's a little bit of a preview for the next video. See, in this scenario, if he catches me off rhythm, he can attack with time as you can see that I'm not ready for his attack. But watch these two next scenarios where there's no disguise on the attack and the approach shot is a little too neutral. Yes, I can read the ball, I hit my split step on time, and it can be very dangerous to attack. So in these two clips here, these aren't the best points by any measure, but I just want to show how holding your shot can just disrupt your opponent's rhythm and make them look bad in spurts. So it's not going to 
always be like this, but sometimes, like on that last shot, you can just catch your opponent flat-footed or if he falls asleep. Regardless, if you're playing more neutral to set up a point, it gives you a little bit of margin of error so you don't have to hit a perfect approach or a perfect finishing ball. And lastly, if the person hits the ball hard and deep, well, you're probably not playing offense. If You're probably on neutral or defense trying to keep your balance and stay in the point. You're going to see me here play defense hard and deep, which is, by most measures, pretty solid defense. Now, he hits a winner, and I'm fine having my opponent hit great shots. If he's doing this consistently all match, then, of course, I'll have to go for winners myself and take more risk. So I think that's just a great overall framework for how to change up your attack against different opponents as the match goes on. Today we've talked about responding to sh different shots your opponent is hitting. Next time we're going to talk about how to change your shot based on how your opponent's recovering, what type of opponent. So keeping on the same theme, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.